Dr. Daniel Stevens from University of Sierra Leone, who is heading up e-learning at the university. Um, and especially because of the way in which they responded to the Ebola epidemic, um, where suddenly the things that they assumed were students coming into face-to-face -face lectures, tutorials, and classes no longer held. And they had to make some very radical choices and some very radical changes. So it will be very interesting to hear how the university was able to do that, um, what they've learned from this process, and what it means for life after the epidemic. So, um, Daniel, it's all yours. Introduction by Tony is on uh, an alternative learning mode within the University of Sierra Leone. Now, within this um, introduction of this particular um, set of subjects, things that we will be discussing at today will be firstly, I will introduce the University of Sierra Leone, then the reason for this intervention, that's the alternative learning mode. And then the steps taken to develop the alternative learning mode, implementation of the alternative learning mode, challenges encountered, lessons learned at the University of Sierra Leone, the way forward, and then we have a conclusion. Now, firstly, an introduction of the University of Sierra Leone. The University of Sierra Leone comprises of three constituent colleges um, or campuses, college campuses. Now the first one and uh, is the oldest is for the college. Then we've got the Institute of Public Administration and Management, IPAM, and also the College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences, COMAS. The oldest, as I said earlier on, of these three is actually the Florida College, which was founded in 1827. This college has trained nationals and nationals and West Africans for nearly two centuries. The colleges have different specialized programs. FBC offers pure and applied sciences, liberal arts, social sciences and law. IPAM offers public administration, public policies, humanities and management, and then College of Medicine offers programs in medicine, public health, nursing, and allied med medical health. What is the reason for this intervention of the alternative land mode? Just around March 2014, the deadly Ebola virus disease, known as EVD, outbreak occurred in the West African region, formerly known, this disease is actually formerly known as the Ebola hemorrhage fever. It's a severe fatal illness with an average fatality rate of 50%, varying between 25% to 90%. The first EVD outbreak occurred in 1976 in rural parts of Central Africa, but the recent West African outbreak has been in both urban and rural areas. The 1976 outbreak occurred in two simultaneous locations in Zawa, Sudan, and Yambuko, the Democratic Republic of Congo, with the latter near the Ebola River, from which the virus derived its name. But the most severely affected countries in this West African Ebola was the Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. The reasons we actually assume is because they have weak health systems and infrastructure, 
And after long periods of conflict and instability, these three countries were actually unable to contain the um, virus. In August 8, 2014, the World Health Organization declared the West African outbreak an international public health emergency. A separate unrelated outbreak occurred simultaneously in Rwanda, Equatorial, and isolated parts of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Due to this outbreak in Sierra Leone, the government of Sierra Leone decided to shut down all educational institutions for several months. In this light, no student was able to receive any formal education or training in the whole country. It devastated the economy, shut down the hospital system, hammered the agricultural sector, and even paralyzed the educational institutions. Many young teenagers were getting unwanted and unplanned pregnancies as they had nothing doing for this period. This was what really triggered the alternative learning mode which was meant to help engaging the student at the University of Sierra Leone. What were the different steps that was used to develop the alternative learning mode? Now the first was to ensure the management of the university was sensitized. This was extremely important because most of the people or the management within the management of the university were not actually very okay with computing or ICT. So we have to sensitize them so they can understand that yes, this can be an alternative method which can actually work and can help students being engaged. Secondly, we need to involve the academic staff. Now, this was something that um, was supposed to be um, completely or heavily loaded on the academic staff because the academic staff were supposed to still develop their teaching materials, which uh, for many centuries they've actually just been doing things on little papers and then just go to classrooms and, and, and then just give out their lectures. But then we have to involve them because now things have to change because all the lecture materials will have to be typed and then sent to the student. The third one, we need to ensure that a semi-robust learning platform was developed. This was extremely important as the University of Sierra Leone had no infrastructure for ICT. So for us to be able to achieve this alternative learning mode, we needed to have things like a very good website, a very good internet facility within the university, and a few other things to ensure that, yes, at least those basic things can actually be done. Number four, creating email addresses for all the registered students at the University of Sierra Leone. As I said previously, ICT is basically non-existent in or at the University of Sierra Leone before the Ebola. So now what has to happen is that email addresses for all the registered students, that's official ones, will have to be created so that the lecturers will be able to send the lecture notes via the email addresses. We also need to create email addresses for all academic and administrative staffs. Yes, all the administrative or academic staff didn't have any official email addresses. So we have to actually create all of these email addresses. Then we have to create mailing lists for all programs and levels within the university and ensure that it's right students are placed at their appropriate mailing list. Yes, this was very, very, very important because what was actually done by the ICT directorate was to ensure that mailing lists were created
created. And let's say, for example, um, a student, well, say, say there's a program called, um, say, physics and level three. Now, these physics level three, students are doing different modules. Now, let's say, for example, one of the module will be statistics and physics. Now, uh, a mailing list will have to be created for, for that statistics and physics for students within the appropriate level, so level year, um, year three or year two. And then what will happen is the ICT directorate got all these programs and modules, then attach all the appropriate students, their email addresses, into these mailing lists. So that when lecturers are able to actually prepare their lecture materials, all they need to do is to click on the mailing list for the appropriate module. <laughs> Sorry. They also have to train all staff on how to use the system effectively. Yes, a thorough training was supposed to um, um, take place whereby all the staff, both administrative and academic and even management also, will have to be trained on how to use the system effectively as they have never, most of them have never used such a system. And then, after all that has actually happened, we we'll need to roll out the system so the students who are actually on holidays. Now we get to the next one, which is the implementation of the alternative learning mode. We see that lecturers were able to develop learning materials for their respective modules. So after we've sensitized, we've trained the lecturers, a quality assurance team was formed, and that quality assurance team was to ensure that all the lecture notes or materials coming or going into the system are materials which have been which have gone through the quality assurance team. And then when these things have actually been done, then they can before we were planning to upload them on the internet but then we realized that was going to take some time because we're going to get a dropbox um, kind of a system but then it's much easier for them to just um, attach them and then send them to the respective uh, students as i said these learning materials were then attached to the emails and then selected the appropriate mailing list which i've explained then Students were able to receive their various learning materials and then respond to the mailing list if the need arise. Yes, after, so for example, the students who are actually doing physics and statistics, when they receive, uh, on a weekly basis, they receive all their lecture materials, then obviously they can open it anywhere because what we did, the system that was used was a mobile kind of a system, mobile version, which can be open. Lecture materials can be open through um, um, either um, their smartphones or their um, laptops or any other things that can actually open these things because we try to look at the problems in theory whereby a lot of students do not have, do not have things like tablets, uh, smartphones and the like but then most of them do have what they call smartphones. Maps were even allocated to students after completing the assignment through the ALM. Yes, the alternative learning mode actually decided um, to um, have uh, their assignments sent to them. And, and um, after they've actually received these assignments, then let maps were actually given to them if uh, they decided to complete their assignments. Students were also encouraged to do personal research to the ALM. Yes, we actually give, the lecturers actually give students um, um, websites or other areas so that they can do research. What are some of the challenges that were encountered? Quite a few challenges. Firstly, as I said earlier on, there was no ICT infrastructure avail available before the Ebola outbreak. This is a very big challenge because nothing, apparently nothing was there for us to even start. It was basically like starting from fresh. There was nothing on ICT at all within the whole university. Secondly, most of the staff were not computer literate. Only about maybe five or ten percent were IT literate. The rest were not. 
So we had to really train them. So it was a big challenge because most of them couldn't really accept um, the system until after we've sensitized them before they actually see the need. As students were already at home and it was very difficult to reach them. Yes, this was a very big challenge because these students were all sitting at home, nowhere to get them, but then what was done, we actually called a, a press conference, then a presentation was done, and showing them how to access or how to receive their, 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 their email addresses, because what we really did was, we were pretty simple. Like, because we've got three constituent colleges, uh, HBC, ICAM, um, and Commerce. Now, what we did, say for example, a student from HBC, we actually used the four, uh, the, the three FBC, that's the, 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 the um, FBC itself, and then we decided to use their registration number. Say their registration number is 5784. So their email address will be FBC5784 at usl.edu.sl. So um, this was very, very interesting. Now, um, students were, were able to actually um, um, finally receive the information. Only a few people were allocated to develop the ALM. Only a few people because most people didn't actually know anything about ICT within the university. So there were only a few people. Now, some staff were even trying to sabotage the project due to selfish reasons. Yet some people didn't like what was happening, so they wanted to sabotage the whole um, thing itself. Quite a few lessons we learned. Traditional methods of education is only limited in the classroom. Should always be prepared for unforeseen occurrences. Should try to incorporate ICT in all our curriculums. And management of the university should take ICT more seriously. So these were the lessons because if all this infrastructure was actually in place, then it would have been much easier for the university to just continue giving these um, students all their learning material. But because nothing was actually there, it um, became a problem. What's the way forward? We need to ensure that there is a robust ICT infrastructure in the university. We need to ensure that all staff and students are ICT okay. We need to increase the ICT budget because there was absolutely no budget at all for ICT within the university or even maybe a little. We need to have a robust e-learning platform in the university. E-learning platform is extremely important so that everything can be done online and then internet connectivity should be a priority in the university. Conclusion. As we know, the technology has revolutionized. Um, but bless. Are you with me? Hello? Okay. It has actually revolutionized business. And obviously, that should also uh, be revolutionized within the educational system or learning in higher education. Live classroom is good in many ways, but then in this 21st century, it is very costly, time wasting, etc. The need to transform how institutions learn points to a modern, efficient, and flexible alternative learning. The mission of corporate e learning is to supply the workforce with an up-to-date and cost-effective program that yields motivated, skilled, and loyal knowledge workers. This alternative learning mode can help achieve the following. Anywhere, anytime, and anyone. That's learning anywhere, anytime, and anyone. Secondly, substantial cost saving due to elimination of travel expenses. Thirdly, just-in-time access to timely information. Fourthly, higher retention of content of content through personalized learning. Number five, improve collaboration and interaction among students. And number six, online training is less intimidating than instructor-led courses. So to bridge the educational gap, then all African universities need to step up and use ICT as a tool for learning and teaching. Thank you very much.
Um, Daniel, I think we're going to take some questions in the text chat and maybe some by Mike as well. And thank you very much for sharing. Thank you for sharing your experience. No sound. You can't hear anything. That's not good. Um, Oh, that's very good. Okay, this well, is just a little bit now. I can hear you. I just picked up you. I just picked okay. up you. Yes, I can hear you now a little bit. Much. Thank you very much, Daniel. Okay, one of the things I'm wondering about. Oh yes, I can hear you now. Yes, yeah, it's much better. Organizationally, was I have a sense that you have. You have had many other roles involved with technology processes in Sierra Leone. That this is not the only role you've been involved in. Certainly from your LinkedIn page, it looks like you're involved in a number of other very big projects. So the question I have is, were you brought in specially to um, make this intervention in the university, or were you in place? Oh, I lost you. I can't hear you anymore. I've lost you. I can't hear you anymore. I'm posting in the text chat because it's clear you don't you, you don't have some sound. You're missing some sound, so I post it in the text chat. University of Sierra Leone, and uh, I have just been a director just over a year because I have actually been in the UK for 26 years working over there, and I just came to the University of Sierra Leone, and uh, then uh, actually it was within months before we had the outbreak. So I've only been in the university for months before we had the Ebola outbreak. Okay. Um, if I can actually get, I'm just trying to think of what um, uh, uh, I think Tony has just said. Is that what uh, it's so a challenge of an addition? It was, it was, it was a very big challenge. If that's what you're trying to say. I think it was a very big challenge. Yes, it was actually a very big challenge um, um, for the organisation because uh, this is something that is very new. This is something that um, there was the, the money. The country is very poor and they haven't got money and they haven't actually allocated any money. And so, whatsoever for ICT, and obviously it makes it worse because no one was expecting the Ebola outbreak, nothing, apparently nothing, not just for the organization, but for the country as a whole. And uh, apparently it was only the University of Syria that uh, was actually really able to engage the students. All the rest of the educational institution came to a standstill. Now, let me just ask also, as, is someone relatively new in the book? Yes. Yes, I am, as I said. I was very, very, very new in that position, as I said. Was it like, because I got um, employed with the university uh, on, the, on, on the 6th of January 2014, and then this thing happened in March 2014, so it was like a couple of months, really, before, before, before the outbreak. Yes, so I'm very, very new before this whole thing happened. Yes, 
according to, I think Mr. Ajero uh, Amu has just asked what platform that was used. Basically, it was pretty simple. We just used, um, it was just a normal. As I said, this is very, very basic. We only just use the website because we had, firstly, we had to have a very good website because at first there was no website at all. So we just used a very, very good, um, we just make sure that we had a very good website. And within the website, then we decided to see how best we can um, subscribe for unlimited email addresses. So because we had unlimited email addresses, then we were, uh, were able to actually create all these email addresses for our, our students and staff. Well, yes, MOOC was one that, is, uh, that was supposed to be used, but then because of what happened, what really happened, it was, it was very difficult for us to, to use MOOC. It was something that just happened just like that, and there was no way that we can actually go and use the MOOC system. Yet I even spoke to uh, uh, quite a few guys who were actually um, on the MOOC system itself, but then we didn't have the time because there were a lot of things that were supposed to put in place for us to have a MOOC system in place, or a MOOC platform. But then, this is something we're working on to ensure that such a thing always happens. I hope you can, can you still hear me? Can you all still hear me? I'm just speaking on Zoom, but I'm not sure what's happening. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you still hear me, everyone? Okay, that's fine. Okay, if you can hear me, yes, uh, as I said, I'm still waiting for more questions. I, I can actually see the question that you're typing in and then I will just have to um, respond um, by voice. Um, as I said earlier on, uh, that intervention was something impromptu. It wasn't planned, and I'm not saying that is what should be done within African universities, because it's very, very basic. But at that point in time, they said half a lot is better than none, and that is what would have worked at that point in time. So uh, there are quite a few new ones which we are planning to use, so that is just the basic. Yes, I've had quite a few feedbacks from students. Most of the students were very pleased, they were quite happy that such an intervention actually came to play um, just within the right time. And uh, they believe if it wasn't for that intervention, some of them would have done things which they were not supposed to do. So yes, I've had a very, very positive feedback, not just from the students, but even from the parents and even other people from the country itself. Yes, was uh, can see that Tony is trying to type, but then once I'm waiting to hear the question that he is about to ask, okay, now no, no, the imperial law has just asked, did the student experience any challenges in accessing the lecture notes and sending in their assignments? Well, uh, some of them, yes, some of them actually ex experienced some difficulties because, especially when it comes to the ones that were using smartphones, you know, sometimes they said, 
if they send things like pictures and videos, it is very difficult for them because their smartphones were very small. But then, uh, what was advice to them was that if they have to send something or they they are certain things which have got very um, 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 very big attachment, then all they need to do is to maybe plug that into a laptop or go to one of the internet cafes and try to see how best they can. Um, um, access these things, and also most of them actually send the assignment. That one, there was no problem at all. Well, the university has actually made a commitment, yes, to do that. But then, one of the problems is they're saying that um, there was a problem with uh, the, the the funds because during the Ebola outbreak, the money that was being made stops coming. So. Um, yes, they have quite a few problems with that, but then they're trying to commit on making sure that we have some serious ICT infrastructure in place. That's very true. Um, Kola, you should um, Kola Wale, you should need to just just use the the, 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 the charts because I can't hear I can't hear at all. So if you ask the question in the chat, then I can answer or respond through my voice. Well, really, uh, my aim, I'm saying this, my aim is to actually see how best we can have an open university of Sierra Leone. Yes, I do not mind at all. I would like to see how we can work together because it's not just the university, but then my aim is to see how best ICT can actually be used as a tool for learning from not just primary secondary school or university, but from primary school. We think that is very important because anything can happen whatsoever. Because now the whole world depends on ICT. Yes, um, Kola, um, that's a very good question about academic staff. Yes, some of them actually took it very well, others don't. But, uh, well, didn't, sorry. But what we're saying, they, they, it was something that the Vice Chancellor was very strict and told them that they have to because there's no other way. There's no way because they've been paying their lecturers or academic staff. Then they cannot just be sitting down without doing anything. So we provided help for them. So even when they had problems in typing their notes or whatever, we actually got the admin, administrative staff to do such things for them. Yes, it wasn't an easy thing for the academic staff, but then it was done. And as, uh, as I said, uh, quite a few people are typing. Yes, we in uh, Africa, we need to come together, especially ICT or IT expert, expert right, or, or, or experts, sorry, to come together and to ensure we sometimes have to force, we need to force some of these institutions, some of the administrations to ensure that ICT Really, it's not just one of the ways of learning, it's really at this point in time to be the only way for people to learn. Because right now, students can actually go to classes, they're not learning. All they're doing is to run past exams, but ICT help them. ICT will definitely help them to learn, and this is what we should encourage. should be an option to leverage this particular gap between supply and demand between the entire um, educational institution because ICT, as we all know, can do a lot of things, miracles. All we need to do is to ensure that it becomes 
and none. And one thing I am actually trying to do is to see how maybe in your different institution, because in, in Sierra Leone and most African institutions, I think it's almost the same. Whereby when they look at when they look at key workers, they actually think about the vice chancellor, the registrar, and the finance director. I think it's about time for all universities, all institutions, to start looking at adopting the ICT director as a key worker in all educational institutions in Africa. Because without ICT, nothing can happen. very true. That is very true because during this Ebola period, nothing was happening in the university. People were just coming in, most people staff were just going to the, the common room and start drinking, but then we had something going. We had something going, we actually kept the university going, we kept students actually, um, and we engaged our students, and this was something we think was brilliant. Thank you all very much, and uh, we hope that we all can, can, can come together and see how best we can be able to change the face of education in Africa. Thank you.